Hello everyone and welcome. This is Rob Sesternino on the WTOP Sports Junior Prom Edition of Tuesday Night Sports. Unfortunately tonight we have some sad news to report. A football legend is dead. Former Baltimore Colt and New York Jets head coach Weeb Eubank has died tonight at the age of 91. His cause of death was not released but is believed to be heart related. Eubank was the football genius that masterminded the greatest upset in NFL history as the Jets beat the Baltimore Colts in Super Bowl III. His coaching of Namath and the Jets has made Super Bowl III remembered as one of the greatest NFL games ever played. Tonight, Jets fans across the country bow their heads as they remember the first and only coach to take the Jets all the way. Turning to another possibly immortal NFL team, the 98 Denver Broncos are to the NFL what my little brother is to Tecmo Super Bowl. This team is 9-0 and cannot be beaten by any normal means. In an exercise of sheer futility, the Kansas City Chiefs hosted the Denver Broncos last night who were without the services of quarterback John Elway, which is about the equivalent of giving my little brother the bad controller. Rich Gannon got the start for 4-5 and five Kansas City as they look to reverse the fortunes in the second half of the season. We'll pick it up in the first quarter. 0-0, Bubby Brister gets the busy signal because he calls his own number. He'd scramble 38 yards to give Denver the 7-0 advantage early, and then he makes sure the ball is still fully inflated. Yes, it appears to be. John, come in. We have reason to believe Terrell Davis is really your mom. Speaking of Terrell Davis, later on in the first, Terrell runs for a touchdown on his own 41 yards, and the suspicions are proved wrong. Marty Schottenheimer could use some chunky soup. Chiefs make a run down 14-0 on third and goal. Rich Gannon finds Kimball Anders in the end zone touchdown. 14-7, Broncos, and suddenly it's interesting, and suddenly it's not interesting. 23-7, Denver in the fourth quarter. Rich Gannon would get beaten by Bill Romanowski, the way the legend of Zelda beat up that dragon Gannon. Silver arrow to the heart. The Chiefs will fall to 4-6, while the Broncos are the story of the year at 10-0 with six left to play. And here is the final from elsewhere in sports tonight. In the NHL, Carolina defeated Montreal 5-4. In the third period right now, it's currently Philadelphia 4, Pittsburgh 1. And also in the third period, Chicago 1, Nashville nothing. And after 1, the New York Islanders 1, Colorado 1. In top 25 college basketball, number 1, Duke defeated unranked Davidson 94-61. Number 4, Kentucky defeated Eastern Kentucky 99-64. Michigan State 96, Oakland 66. And number 22, Syracuse, opened their season up tonight in a rout. It was Syracuse 93 and Colgate 40. Tonight, the National League announced its winner of the NL Cy Young Award. The Cy Young is presented to the best pitcher in each league at the end of the season. And now the envelope, please. The winner of the NL Cy Young, Tom Glavin for the Atlanta Braves. For the sixth time in eight years, the Atlanta Braves pitcher has won the award. This is Glavin's second Cy Young. Glavin led the NL with 20 wins and a stellar 2.47 ERA. Finishing second behind Glavin was San Diego reliever Trevor Hoffman. Hoffman had 53 saves and 54 attempts this season and actually received more first place votes than Glavin. Had the closer Hoffman won the award, it would then be okay to call the award the Cy of Relief. No, Your Honor, I don't think he was scouting me when he told me to go to third base. The woman who is accusing New York Mets general manager Steve Phillips is promising to file a lawsuit this week. In the meeting, Steve Phillips has returned to work, marking the end of his eight-day leave of absence. Upon his return, he was quoted as saying, You guys weren't kidding about Bobby Bonilla? Somebody call my obstetrician because I keep on having those labor pains. That's right, folks. It's time for NBA Lockout. 98. All right, ladies and gentlemen, every week we update the NBA owners lockout. And tonight, November 17th, is day 140 of the owners lockout for 1998. Tonight, nine, nine games were lost, bringing the grand total to 108 games lost due to the lockout. And the projected salary lost is $250 million. The two sides did not meet today and haven't met since November 6th. So here's a rundown of what didn't happen tonight in the NBA. The Bulls didn't beat the, the Knicks 108 to 93. The Jazz didn't route the Lakers 120 to 88. And the Nets did not upset the Heat in overtime by a final of 112 to 110. And that's what didn't happen tonight as we remain locked out. And that's 
what's going to happen on the uh, on the junior prom edition of the uh, Tuesday Night Sport. Very nice. So Cuse was in the house tonight. Cuse was in the house. A, yeah. uh, a huge victory oh over Colgate. The Colgate coach was quoted after the game as saying it was it was their it was their aim to uh, to come out and uh, and bear the the crest of, of their of their team as as they didn't come out tonight quite aqua fresh. Very nice. Thank you very much, Rob. We'll see you. And the head of the International Monetary Fund says he favors giving Hurricane Ravage Nicaragua and Honduras a break on their loans for giving most of their debt.